All right, here I needed more than a quarter of a page. The first words in the book, Strong Towns. For hundreds of years, humans built cities for people who walked. The size of buildings, spacing of destinations, and distances individuals will travel on a routine day were scaled for a society where nearly everyone traveled by foot. This was true for human settlements across all continents, spanning all latitudes. Today in North America, we build cities around a more modern transportation technology, the automobile. We have developed different building types, different development styles, and different ways of arranging things on the landscape to accommodate a living arrangement based on automobile travel. The apex of ancient cities, such as Athens or Rome, had been tested during times of abundance, scarcity, peace, war, disease, pestilence, stagnation, growth. The result was a pattern of development that was adaptable, productive, and strong. That same pattern can be seen in the pre-1900s cities of North America. While the architecture changes with geography and time, the essential layout is the same. A person living in a frontier town in the early 1900s or in Manhattan of the same period, could have bought a meal, earned a paycheck, and found a place to sleep all within a reasonable walk. In other words, these neighborhoods would have been familiar to our ancient city-dwelling ancestors. Our community has twice the state average of taxpayer-subsidized housing accommodating active transportation so people don't have to have an automobile only makes sense when such a large percentage of folks can scarcely afford a place to live. Let me read that again. Accommodating active transportation so people don't have to have an automobile only makes sense when such a large percentage of folks can scarcely afford a place to live. Now, go back to the, first, the sentence before that. Our community has twice the state average of taxpayer-subsidized housing. Hmm. Accommodating active transportation only makes sense when so many people don't have enough money to pay for their own home, let alone an automobile. It only makes sense when such a large percentage of folks can scarcely afford a place to live to accommodate active transportation. 